curate this exhibition for DB. There's a lot of work, but we want to show enough for it to be meaningful and for people to be able to see the connections between the different groups. Because I really like what Digby does with the with the background. With, well, he sort of does colour blending with the coloured background. Digby's decided to entitle this exhibition Live a Little. And I think that's what people respond to in his work and will very much respond to in this exhibition. His exuberance and his fearlessness in letting the way he sees the world come out. Can't wait for tonight, and it'll be a very good night, I think. Bring all my old friends and some friends from around the neighborhood. And can't wait to see everyone, really. to see the wonderful results of your work and to share with you today and tonight what is a very happy moment, your third um, art exhibition. I understand the previous one was sold out and I expect this one will be too. Thank you, Digby, for sharing your inspiration, sharing your creativity and inspiring us all. And congratulations, I declare the exhibition open. Thank you. Everyone, to thank you to come tonight. To, to lend your beautiful support for the, the artist himself. <laughs> and yeah, so welcome, have fun, and yeah, have fun. It went really well tonight. It was great to have so many people here and such a rush of enthusiasm for Digby's work. What I really enjoyed about this particular opening is that it's not in any way presented as or seen to be a disability arts event. Digby is an artist and Digby happens to have a so-called disability, but that's really not the focus for this exhibition. We've been really surprised at the response to his work. It's got a value that's not monetary value. Being an artist has opened his world, has made his world bigger, and people have a connection, they have something to talk to him about. Like, do you know Meg? We haven't met, but I have a painting of yours yeah. from our wedding. Oh, please, yeah. please, please, why? Please. The whole thing about the disability can be really awkward for a lot of people. They don't have a familiarity, and so that's been a really important thing in his own confidence as a person, as an individual. So it really feels like that's part of his career now. Where's he? Hello. Where's my digs? Where's my face here? Come here, come here, come here. <coughs> so now Tom um, is actually up to acting with another actor. <laughs> I invited his best friend Digby to be involved in some of the improvised scenes today. So having Digby with Tom today, it was like an icing on the cake. You set me up. I'm sorry, bro. I'm happy for Tom to act in classes by Tracy because she's, she, she's born how to act and she know how to do acting really well. So something wide about the class that is make Tom understand how everything is serious. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yeah. I like Tom a lot. 
He looked like a young man. I just want to see him the element himself as an actor. Hey, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. So, Tom, you've been doing these acting like shots for three months now. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel uh, amazing and the best. Yeah. So today we just had a bit of a debrief and over the past three months, Tom has transformed. I'm so proud of you, Tom. You know, one, once upon a time you came in and you were shy and now you're confident. Yeah. You weren't coming to the workshops and now you are. You're half an hour early, hello. Yeah, hello. That's a bonus. And Tom, I'm very proud and excited to award you with this certificate of achievement. Oh, please, please. Thank you. Uh, um, it's an honour. Tom needs to now grow from watching soap operas to actually be working with production crew, with cameras and with other actors. It's been a milestone for me being Tom's workshop teacher. It has shown me to get out there and start planning more workshops for other people with disabilities. We're going to um, probably our final meeting for the Abbeyfield group because every time we go to council and we put forward supported accommodation, um, we've been met with really such negativity with the new council that we just don't think we can endure another year or two of turning up at council without any support from them. So, when I was going to have gradually Maybe, maybe if they see that we've backed out, I reckon they will come. Um, no, I don't think they will come running, they will No, no, no I'm, I'm sure they're not. They're not they're celebrating. Yeah, happy with that. We've been a pain in the neck. We're just taking a different tack. Yeah. Now, a different tack is not to hold meetings all the time and, and turn up and turn up the council. And turn up the council. But they did ask us, but we're still there, so. Well, you know. I think we really did a good job over the last five years as a group. We've kept up the minutes, we've kept up the letters, we've kept up a barrage, we've been to every single meeting at council that would be associated with disability or housing. I think we all feel that we just have to have plan B and we have to do that for our own peace of mind. I know for me that it will just feel so good if I can get something nailed down in the next few years because then I don't have to keep worrying about it. She wants to sit there. She loves there. Okay. So tell me what this going is about. What, what is everything that's happening? Well, my plan is I love having a real plant outside my my like house. Having like plants. Plants, but like, like this mm. with a little box. Like. Well, why don't you stand up there and I'll take a shot of you where your house will be. Yes. Okay? Yes. What they did was there was a very old brick building. So, from where that tree is down here, so that this whole area, and it'll be a place for, you know, either for Digby to live here, it could be his carer. If I build this dwelling for him, he could live semi independently here. He wouldn't necessarily have to rely on his parents for everything during the day. He would be able to have his own contact with his own carer and make his arrangements and he would then, you know, be responsible for um, organising some, some of his meals, organising, you know, getting himself to work on time. It's not real clear. I'm still finding my way. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just trying to keep as many options open for all that at the moment. I need to turn things around. My sleep is better now. My sleeping too. My health is great. I do exercise every time now. I usually sleep in, but now I don't. I don't do more things in the daytime than with my family, friends. I'm getting married next 
see I am a member on the Art Club. It is a present group for the people from Death Run. Yeah, yeah, and they? They are my family. I want people to learn more patience for people who are Death Run. We are as like anyone else. Since the acting workshops have finished, I decided to go back to TAFE to study office skills and also in hairdressing. The course has made me feel more resourceful. The art will always be close to my heart. But at this moment, I'm ready to move on to a different chapter of my life completely. And choose to build this place for me, maybe. And um, it's over to us now. And I think we're getting tired and boring about it. If someone be out there want to help people with disability, you can help them. Find out a nice job connected to people with disability, help them. Join, make them join their lifetime. People with disability will need to be understood and heard and cared for. I just want to be an independent young man who enjoy my life. That's all.